action. Hello everyone, it's Mohit from Project Perfumery India and today we are with our first video from Ministry of Niche. That is our new uh, niche store in Ahmedabad and that is will be serving entire samples and all the niche samples that you'll be buying from our website, those testers are right here. So uh, let's get started. So today our topic is going to be niche fragrances of course. So we are doing this video is about niche fragrances only. I'll be discussing some top niche fragrances for Indian winters or the ones which I like in winter. Now, unlike summers, winters are quite, you know, desirable weather for wearing perfume because it lasts more, it lasts longer because in winters you don't sweat much, there ain't, uh, you are wearing layering of clothes, so the fragrances tend to last long. And of course, at that time, you don't need fresh fragrances, but uh, you'll be needing something which is dark, which is resinous, which is leathery. That is the that is why we recommend uh, these type of fragrances for winters because in winters all you need uh, when the environment is chilly you look for some warmth some coziness that is where these fragrances are uh, good close encounter fragrance as well there are some heavy hitters as well so yeah now why niche why what why this word basically baki perfumes or in some way what is the difference so niche of course is something which we have been produced in limited quantity and uh, like how other brands produced in thousands lakhs these are produced in hundreds so that is why these are niche because of scarcity of ingredient the artisanal point of view here every niche fragrance uh, tells a story that is not with designer fragrances what's the story behind one million nothing what's a uh, story behind cool water nothing so yeah these things have uh, stories inspirations behind them in that is what is involved in the creation of niche plus the ingredients itself are hand-picked high quality and mostly natural i won't say 100 percent natural but yeah probably 90 95 percent natural and that is why niche fragrances are quite expensive so this is not this is basically uh it's not a uh, basically, you, it's not a affordable hobby basically you need to have deep pockets if you are diving into niche otherwise if you are here only for exploration exploring different different fragrances you go ahead for samples decants that's the best way to do it that is without spending 20,000 rupees you will be getting the whole feel of that particular so here it's the experience which they are delivering it's the story which they are delivering it's the concept and then the naturalness of ingredients that is why niche and then the limited production so that is why the niche are expensive than uh, designers so let's get started the we'll be starting from i'll keep them down for now and we'll be starting from uh, the lower price and go to the higher price so the first one on my list in my top winter scents uh the first one is solil de jeda solil de jeda by stephen lucas humbert 777 now this means son of jeda so uh, we all know about city of jeda so this is inspired from city of jeda or the solil de jeda simple as that as the name says now this one the house itself creates very dark kind of sense you will see fragrances which are around mottled skin shows the the entire bottle is like snake skin so model skin i honestly uh haven't given a try but yeah in this house this one remains my favorite this is called solil de jeda uh, and this is a leather scent it is a leather scent once you spray it on it will give you that ashy leathery vibe which is slight sweet as well like how uh, most of the oud fragrances are like if you smell kalima that kind of vibe is also there in it along with ashy and leathery white to it so it, it smells very dry as well at the same time this one is very masculine and very potent people who love middle eastern blends they would love this one and if you love leather this is a very different take on leather you it has traces of oud as well so this is one of a very daring scent and you have to uh, once you wear it you don't have to worry about for next 10 12 hours it would project like beast and go on and on and on so that's how it is it's solil de jeda by shl 777 right guys moving on the second one on my list would be black afghano by nasamato now this one is called black afghano the story behind is uh, the perfumer has tried to recreate the smell of hashish into the bottle that is why it's called black afghano so that's the inspiration it does smells like 
hashish or how we call it but that is like nothing to worry nobody is going to catch you for that because it's a scent this is how naturally when uh, they extract it how it smells that this is that particular smell it's not in the air like you can see from you can sniff from mild somebody smoking up so it's not like that this doesn't smells like smoke in the air but yeah this smells mm. like how the raw hashish extracted would be or yeah so that is black afghano uh, recently this one this one has also gone into from limited production the production have increased now so of course it would go in more towards slightly synthetic side that's what i believe uh, the earlier black afghano used to be very dark very thick this one is slightly on a downer side but it still gives me 8 to 10 hours but that potency it was considered one of the longest lasting perfume around two two and a half years back 18 hours 16 hours but now good 10 12 hours on it this is black afghano by nasamato second one is also from the same perfumer but a different project this is called ortho parisi ortho parisi and this perfume is called bocanera now this particular whole line I the concept is totally different from the Nasamato line. This is Project Natama Nasamato. This is Project Ortho Parisi. So now Bocanera, if I have to describe you in one word, is actually black Afghano with chocolate. So black Afghano, put some chocolate in it and the dark chocolate, not regular cocoa or cocoa. Uh, this is like very dark chocolate along with already dark black Afghano. So that is what I, I don't know what's the inspiration behind it. Probably the sweet cravings you get after hashish. Probably this is what it uh, reminisces. Rem so smells like. So this one. Now, if you're looking for if black afghano is in your wish list, I would rather suggest you to go for bocanera because this has 80% black afghano vibe, and that black afghano vibe, how it used to be one one and a half year back or two years back in the black afghano that quality i'm talking about this one i put right now and i could actually smell it by tomorrow 4 5 pm or even 6 pm so this is like 18 20 hours so if you're not happy with black afghano performance bocanera is a very very good uh, substitute i won't say it's a clone or anything but this is a different take is black afghano with chocolate and the perfumer is the same so yeah this is a totally different take on black afghano if you love black afghano you would love this one as well you're looking to buy black afghano go for this one and you won't regret it i have been using the scents uh, from pretty much one one and a half year so niche has a lot to explore which even i know i might know several brands even i come across every day i come across a new brand that is into niche any corner of the world uh, artisanal perfumer would start his line and cater to a very limited audience and guys who have developed taste into independent houses indie fragrances and niche fragrances they do not hesitate to explore the niche so the more weird it is more it appeals see the whole line, line of zoologist how it is same way the whole line of nasamato so these these started as a uh, artisan artisanal brand but now it has become more into the niche section artisanal we qualify something which is uh, handcrafted hand blended in a very limited uh, quantity that is what is artisanal there's a art involved the perfumer itself uh, maybe he grows the ingredients himself or mixes him or the whole uh, processing is done by hand that is what is artisanal right like how we have khadi in india that is how uh, artisanal thing goes there so coming to next one uh, we are done with bocanera the next one would be memo italian leather now this house is quite interesting if you are in if you uh, love leather into your sense these guys have uh, made various leather fragrances in how and given like say this is italian leather there is african leather so it it does take some element from the culture uh, italian leather now italian leather so basically uh, it is tomato leaf very herbal sharp opening along with masculine leather so that is what i would uh, this is probably the strongest one from the entire leather line this is called italian leather we have african leather which is uh, more on the spicy side so that goes more for uh, clubbing or evening wear same way there is russian leather irish leather and moroccan leather irish is more towards the drier side without tomato leaf what is left is irish leather and moroccan leather is actually combination of both irish and uh, italian but the number one from the whole leather line is italian leather by memo next up is leather oud by christian dior so i did a whole sequence on this one i did a whole video on 
this one. So Leather Oud remains my number one because it's the most long lasting fragrance of the entire uh, Dior line. Apart from that, this one has got that animalic vibe. So that gives the real Oud feeling and right how other Oud leather smell is very Western. This one still gives that Middle Eastern touch. So Leather Oud, one of my longest lasting fragrances for winters uh, by Christian Dior. Moving up the ladder, uh, next one probably I would say is from House of Georgiov. We talk about niche, Georgiov has to be there. And this is called Naxos. Now, talking about Naxos, in very simple words, this is pure Havan on steroids. So this is more like smelling how the finest of the cigar would smell, the finest of tobacco would smell is Naxos. Wow, this is very warm and cozy and probably if you love Pure Havan, this is like the, if Pure Havan was made is at the niche version of Pure Havan, that would be Naxos. Uh, trust me guys, this one, these kind of scents are made once a while, like how Tobacco Vanille was a breakthrough, but this one, it's, it, the reach of Tom Ford is way too much, the reach of Georgiov is to a limited high-end clients, it, Tom Ford is at area airport, this is not, I mean you have to find this house. So. Otherwise, if this was made, if this was done at Tom Ford level, it would have, it would have been phenomenal. Phenomenal, guys. I, I would prefer this one uh, over any tobacco scent, except for some vintage ones, the 80s powerhouses one. From the modern tobacco scents, this is my number one, and I don't think any, even not even tobacco vanille would come close when it comes to choose between tobacco scents. So it's George of Naxos, 